How you doing today, guys? Well, today we're, uh, we're back at it again, and we're ready to go ahead and uh, get started on uh, cleaning our carb and rebuilding our carb. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and take off the, uh, the air cleaner cover. And then we're going to take the air cleaner out and just look at how, uh, look at how dirty this thing is. That's nasty. Now I've already taken this apart, so I just put it back together for demonstration purposes. But there would be two little nuts in here that you would undo these two little nuts and then you can take off this little metal bracket. And then finally you've got this piece of, uh, of plastic here with some kind of mesh that it fits very nicely into the piece behind it to seal it out. But there is our carburetor. Well, we've got the saw apart. I just want to show you a few things. And there's a, a line right here. This line is where the fuel is actually going to come into the carburetor. And then I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a line down here that's called the impulse line. And the way the carburetor works is it actually takes pressure from the crankcase to move a diaphragm that's going to move the fuel uh, from the fuel tank, which is going to come in through this line. And then over here, there's a, there's a line from the fuel tank which uh, doesn't really go anywhere and I, I think this is just like some kind, of, uh, some kind of a valve that if there's too much fuel pressure or something, it'll release the fuel pressure out here. You see over here, this is where the throttle is coming into the carburetor. This is what's, what's telling the carburetor to go faster or slower. So all we need to do to remove this carburetor is take off this one fuel line right over here very carefully, not, uh, not cutting it. And then I think what I'm going to end up doing is just start to slide it back. And if I move, I don't know if you can see or not, if I move the throttle down, it looks like it's going to be in just the right position to slide the throttle off. This saw does have a choke feature as well. So if I squeeze the trigger and put the choke on, you see how that lever came up? Let me show you that again. Watch right, right here. You see how that lever comes up and works the choke? So we don't have to worry about this lever because it's not connected to the carb. It just has to bump into that piece there. Well, the first thing we want to do is see if we can, see if we can get this hose off. And again, without, uh, without screwing it up. And that seems to be the, uh, the key part here. There we go, and I didn't, I didn't ding it either. It's gonna come out of the impulse line all by itself. The impulse line isn't very tight. If I squeeze the throttle trigger, it's putting pressure on the carb, so it's not gonna wanna come out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kinda move it backwards slowly, and then maybe if I just push this lever down. I wonder how you get that off. Okay, I'm not, really, I'm not really sure what I just did there, but the, the, throttle lever, the throttle lever did just come off. So we're just going to assume we'll find a way to get that back on, and now we can, uh, we can pull the carburetor off. So there's, a, there's our carburetor. Guys, here is our uh, carburetor, and uh, she's, looking, she's looking not too bad. Uh, just so you know, this thing on top, I was doing some research, and this is something that somehow takes into account the atmospheric pressure, so if you're at different elevations, and it somehow helps the carburetor adjust to that. Um, if you look at the bottom here, it's a little bit dirty, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, spray it with some parts cleaner, hit it with some compressed air, uh, wearing my safety glasses and uh, see if we can just clean this up a little bit in the interest of having a nice clean video. You can see how much nicer that looks and I won't be getting dirt back in it when I uh, when I rebuild it. And you'll notice it says uh, it says Walbro on it. I don't know if you guys can read this or not. But when I went and got parts for this carburetor, uh, the, the parts kit says Telatsen. So this there may be a, a little behind the scenes pause for this movie because I'm not sure if Talatsin is the same as Walbro or if they just make carb parts. But uh, we'll take it as it comes and, and see what happens. The first thing I want to do is uh, just go ahead and 
take all my new parts out of the bag and lay them out. And I'll admit this was not my idea. I saw a video and I forget who made it where the guy, um, the guy was rebuilding a carb. So he said that he lays out all his pieces and then as he takes it apart, he can match them up. Oh, he can match them up and I don't see Okay, I thought I lost the, um, the screen. There's always a screen in these. Okay, so this little piece that you can barely see is a screen. And you'll notice that there's, there's doubles. So this, this kit has a, a bigger whatever that thing is and a smaller one. And these carb kits usually come for many different carbs. So you're gonna notice that you'll have extra parts. What I'm going to do in the interest of staying organized is when I take the parts off one side of the carb, I'm going to put them on this side. And when I take the, the parts off the other side of the carb, I'm going to put them on this side. So hopefully we can, uh, we can stay somewhat organized. So let's crack her open and see what we got in here. Without blocking the camera, because I know you guys hate that. Wow. See all the dirt, sawdust on top of that piece? It's not looking too bad. When we're taking it apart, you see this little tab here? There's a little tab to help you locate your gaskets. You've got the thinner diaphragm one with a little metal plate. And then you've got this other one that goes around the outside. And the inside here looks nice and clean. That's not dirty at all. Okay, and see if we can get that off. That came off much easier. You'll see there's a couple pins that are locating tabs on the inside. So this piece folds right over. And you'll also notice that there's a little bit of a, um, a hump on this edge. But this one as well, I believe, is two gaskets. So we've got the thinner one on the inside. You see that? You see how it's got some dust on it there? So that one goes on the inside. And then you've got the thicker one on the outside. Please stay in one piece. Please stay in one piece. No. All right, so that didn't go so well. And then on this uh, carb, if you look right in here, you can see there's, uh, there's a little screen, which quite often that screen will get get clogged up, but I, I gotta admit that this carburetor looks really good. I thought it was gonna have a lot more dust in it and look a lot more abused. This carb's looking really nice. The first thing I'm gonna do is see if I can scrape off some of this gasket material, and I wanna try not to ding the aluminum. Okay, I'm gonna put my goggles on because I'm gonna be using this, uh, this brass brush, which is a very soft metal and see if we can clean this off better. Oh, 
Okay, that should be good. The next thing we're gonna do is grab a pick and there's a little screen over here. We just wanna pull that out. There it is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this little needle valve under here and there's a little spring under it right over here that moves the diaphragm up and down to pump the gas. So we're gonna put our finger on top of this and at the same time undo this screw so that spring doesn't just shoot out on me. Okay, there's a little screw. And there's that piece, there's a little spring. And then there's that little piece in there. This is the old needle valve, and then this is the new needle valve. And if you take a look at the old one, you see how it's kind of worn down there? You can see, I don't know if that's copper, I don't know what that is, but it definitely looks worn. Uh, when I went to buy parts for my carb, the guy at the shop said, you know, he couldn't tell me how many times a carb was running poorly, and replacing this part was the solution right here. And that clearly does have some wear on it. So putting the new one in should definitely help. And what I'm going to do now is take my carb choke and parts cleaner and just spray it in all the holes here, then hit it with some compressed air to clean it out, and uh, we should be good to start putting things back together. So here's our carb, everything's cleaned out, and I gotta say that uh, it looks like a brand new carburetor. All we need is uh, some new gaskets and we're, we're good to go. When you're cleaning your carburetor, make sure you wear your safety glasses. This is one of those times where, where we're not kidding. Um, when you spray the parts cleaner in these holes, you have no idea where it's gonna come out. So safety glasses is really a, a definite, just put them on. This is the diaphragm gasket that came off the carburetor, and this is the diaphragm gasket that came in the kit I got. So it's clearly the wrong kit. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and just take the whole car back to them and uh, see if they can figure out which the right one is. And uh, you know, it's gonna happen sometimes, guys. There's nothing you can do about it. So uh, when we start the film again, we'll have a new kit and keep moving forward.